Question for you, what would you do if you suddenly ran out of power? Some last for a few seconds while other power outages last for days. And that was proven in the attack that happened in North Carolina that caused widespread power outages. You guys remember that, right? A lot of people were unprepared because they felt as if nothing could go wrong. Well, newsflash guys, a lot of things can go wrong and the DHS just confirmed that they're targeting more power stations now. I'm expecting to see a huge spike in generator prices. And is it common for people to be collecting on their retirement funds well before retirement age? Data shows that cash flow just isn't the same for many households and they've had to rely on this to get by. Yeah, they're tapping their 401ks and IRAs early. And now I know that our credit cards are one of the last things that we use for our necessities, but to raid our retirement funds? I mean, how desperate are we now? This is scary, folks. And when we talk about credit card debt that's already reached $925 billion, it's insane. And how do you feel about reporters just disappearing hearing after reporting about powerful politicians. It makes you fear that journalists, honest journalists, are being silenced whenever they step on the wrong toes. Who was this report about? Watch until the end to find out. And we have a lot of surprising updates for today, but before we get to it, please take a second, drop a like for the video, also subscribe to the channel. That way you're always in a loop of the truth and everything that surrounds us. Also, if you own a home, make sure to get your free home warranty quote. I'll leave a link for you guys in the description down below. Never be caught off guard by another very expensive, unexpected home repair again. It takes about 15, 20 seconds. Get your free home warranty quote. The link is in the description down below. Now, I want to show you guys a report that was recently taken off of NBC's account. Watch this. When officers arrived here at the Pelosi home exactly a week ago today, they initially didn't have any idea exactly what was going on. They knew they had a high priority call on their hand. What was unclear, what was happening inside the property just behind me. That was Miguel Amagor, an NBC news reporter. He proceeded to discuss that Pelosi opened the door for the officers, which is what many are saying happened now. But due to this information, Almagor, he's nowhere to be found, at least from a professional standpoint. Go ahead, check his Twitter account, check NBC, check all of it. It's like he's simply vanished in the thin air. His latest tweet, though, has a lot of replies with people who are angry at his misinformation. NBC News actually retracted his story and suspended Amagor. It makes you think, though, who called NBC to tell them that this was all fake? Was it the White House? The House of Representatives? Nancy Pelosi herself? And what was the deal with the suspension? Did it come with a huge severance pay and a contract that made sure that he never talk about this story ever again? Some say that the reporting just didn't meet NBC's standards because it was the truth. Ouch. That's a burn. But let's ask NBC, shall we? In this report, the Department of Justice says that the policeman opened the door to the Pelosi home while the San Francisco District Attorney's Office states that it was Pelosi who opened the door for them. At this point, which one's real? Well, it turns out that Almagro was right. So the question is, what really happened? According to a source familiar with the investigation who personally watched the police body camera footage from that night, Officers knocked on the door of the Pelosi home, then backed away. And the video clearly shows Paul Pelosi opened the door with his left hand. It would be great if they could find a way to release this body cam footage. And I think when it comes to journalistic integrity, they should come clean about what they did to Almarger. But again, the question is, where is this guy now? Something else that a lot of us are looking for are ways on how to make money. Now, it's obvious when we see households pushing themselves to take second or maybe even a third job. Inflation's wrath is raining down on us and the only umbrella that we have is our own ability to create multiple streams of cash or manage our cash flow a little bit better, be it through another job, or passive income. But just to show you how tough it is now, Americans are now starting to dip into their retirement savings accounts. Yes, 401ks, Roth IRAs, traditional IRAs, they're all being tapped. Okay, you know, we have to face the music. More Americans are reaching the end of their financial lifeline. Credit cards are being maxed out. SNAP and EBT benefits aren't enough. They can't borrow anymore and they're almost homeless now. The last resort is that they raid their 401ks, their retirement savings accounts. And I've been telling you guys, you can't use up all this money. You have to start making moves that will set you up for a better tomorrow. It could be working two jobs, creating a side hustle, looking for ways to make money online, proper investments. It's up to us at this point. I don't see stimulus checks falling from the sky at this moment, but you can't get there if you don't manage your cash flow properly. And if you keep buying things you don't need, you're going to be just like these people who have to dip into their retirement savings early just to buy the things that they need. And this is also why you have to have an emergency fund, a cash reserve that's only to be used for emergencies, not because you felt like like getting a new phone or the new Apple iPhone 14 or new flat screen TV. It has to be one purpose and one purpose only, emergency.
emergencies. Do you know why I keep telling you guys to get rid of debt? Because those are cement blocks on your feet and you don't want to keep them on your feet too much longer. It's also hard to blame these people who just want to get by. But in the last few years, the number of people who have raided their retirement accounts, their retirement savings accounts and brokerages through hardship withdrawals, it's gone up by 150%. And it only makes sense that our savings are also crashing. Now, to date, it's at 2.3%. The only time it was lower was back in July of 2005. What came after that? Well, I'm pretty sure you guys remember. It was also worth noting that our credit card debt is now at $925 billion. We're almost at a trillion dollars in credit card debt. You wanna know how people continue to spend money while guys like me say that we're running out of money in this economy? Well, there's your answer. But debt will eventually have to be paid off. That's the scary part. And it's gonna become worse when banks have to repossess assets just to get you to pay for these loans. This leads me to what we should be all doing right now, and that's preparing for anything. We don't want to get caught off guard, especially when attacks can happen anytime. There's also more rumors that are talking about assaulting power grids with guns, and we know that this happened recently in North Carolina. No suspects, no motive, and the FBI is now stepping in after a series of intentional targeted attacks on electric substations in North Carolina. Now, tens of thousands of people have no power and might not get it back until Thursday. Schools are closed, shelters are open, as crews race to get the lights and heat back on ahead of yet another cold night. Here's what we do know. The two substations were damaged by multiple rounds of gunfire on Saturday. Officials estimate the damage is probably in the millions. CNN's Whitney Wild leads us off. Whitney, what do you know about this investigation? Well, at this point, police are saying very little. They are, they are only saying, uh, as you pointed out, that these two substations sustained gunfire at one of the substations. A gate was taken off of its hinges. And Anna, what they're saying notably is that they believe this was intentional and that this was a deliberate criminal act. And what's notable, Anna, is when you look at the two substations, they're 13 miles apart. So it took effort uh, to go from one to the other. Uh, that's about a 20 minute drive at a minimum. Uh, so uh, certainly that will be a significant reason that law enforcement is is describing this as a again a deliberate criminal act right now there is a little bit of good news because here in moore county duke energy tells me that around 7,000 people have been able to get back online since last night the the number of people out of power here is hovering around 33,000. they are working around the clock you can see these folks behind me working very very hard to get this equipment back up and running but it's tough anna because this was so significant the damage was just so significant uh, that it, this isn't like a snowstorm where you can just pop things back up online in you know 12 hours, 24 hours. I mean, as you mentioned, millions and millions of dollars of very significant damage here. So it's going to take some time. Duke Energy saying that they're not going to be able to bring customers back online until about Thursday. Uh, wow. Meanwhile, back to the investigation, the FBI, the State Bureau of Investigation, all trying to figure out who's behind this law enforcement wise, Anna, this is an all hands on deck situation. When the lights go out, what are we supposed to do? Let's not forget about how important energy is and how desperate people can become once something that they need is taken away. Now, I urge you guys to control your spending, buy your necessities and have some foresight of what happens next in your life. Now, I understand that money is hard to get by, but if you understand how to budget your cash, if you knew how to create multiple streams of income, you're already a step ahead of everyone else. So if you want to join me in my Patreon community, I'll be sharing what me and my family are doing in terms of side hustles and passive income. There's a link for the Patreon community in the description of this video down below. Now, if you want to understand how to create side hustles, investing, starting a small business, or maybe even getting into the housing market or stock market, feel free to message me because I am more than willing to share with you guys the information that I've collected over the years and the information that you guys need in order to solve your financial problems. But before I go, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Appreciate you guys watching. You guys are all awesome. YouTube fam out.